Welcome to African Gardening and today I am going to be talking about the advantages or the benefits of hand pollination of soursop flowers. I already have a, a video out there that shows you how to pollinate soursop flowers using your hands. For those of you that do not know uh, what is meant by hand pollination of soursop flowers, uh, hand pollination of soursop flowers is simply a method by which you pollinate soursop flowers using your hands as opposed to allowing natural pollinators uh, like insects to pollinate the flowers. A whole lot of people have had problems with their soursop trees producing so many flowers but little or no fruits. And the reason why you are having lots of flowers and no fruits is simply because the flowers are not being pollinated. Basically, the, re the main reason why you will have flowers and no fruits is simply because your flowers are not being pollinated because either you don't have any pollinators, natural pollinators, or the pollinators are not uh, efficient. The pollinators are not being efficient. So as such, if they don't pollinate the flowers properly or they refuse to pollinate the flowers for whatever reason, those flowers will not turn to fruit. But with hand pollination, you will always, almost 100%, ensure that the flower you are pollinating by hand turns into a fruit. The first advantage of hand pollination of sarsa flowers is that the hand pollination of sarsop flowers allows us to access or allows us to pollinate some flowers that will not allow uh, natural pollinators like ants or beetles to enter into the flower and access have access to the stigma. Because in some sarsop flowers, the inner petals are closed, as you can see on the screen. So when the inner petals are closed, no insect whatsoever can have access to the stigma. They will try as much as they can, they will not be able to go in. So in this case, hand pollination is the only way out. Sarsa flowers, when they are ready to be pollinated, when they are in the female stage, their inner petals are open. So now first, the outer petal opens. There are three outer petals and there are three inner petals. So after the opening of the outer petals, then you now have the opening of the inner petals. Without the inner petals opening, as you can see on the screen, those flowers will not be able to be pollinated by natural pollinators. Why? Because as long as the inner petal is closed, the natural pollinators like ants and beetles, they cannot have access to the stigma. The stigma is the female part that must receive pollens in order to be pollinated. So I'm going to show you an example right now and we're going to see a flower that is ready to be pollinated. It's ready to receive pollens. However, the inner petals, they are closed. And because of that, the only way you can pollinate those flowers is by using your hands. So let's go and see this scenario. All right, so this is a flower, so a flower that is ready to be pollinated. Uh, how do I know it's ready to be pollinated? You can see the outer petals, they are bright yellow. The inner petals, of course, they're always bright yellow. So the outer petals as well, which is this one and this one and this one. So three of them, one, two, three. You can see they are fully open, but guess what? The inner petal is closed. These are the inner petal. They're not open. So if this inner petal is closed, there is no way any pollinator can access the stigma. In this kind of situation, the only way this flower will turn into a fruit, or the only way this flower will be pollinated so that it will turn into a fruit, is by hand pollination. So you can look at it. The inner petals, they are closed. So the uh, beetles ants or any other pollinating natural pollinating insects they cannot have access they can't have access to uh, the stigma so 
the only way out is by hand pollination. So I'm going to carry out the pollination process now. I have my pollens uh, here and uh, I will use a, a brush to apply the pollens so that we can pollinate uh, this particular flower. All right, this is my brush. You can see the pollens. Uh, the pollens, I took the pollens from here. So I'm taking the pollens here now uh, so that we can pollinate. So I've gathered the pollens. I actually kept them in the refrigerator. Uh, so pollens can be stored in a refrigerator for like two weeks. But you must ensure that the refrigerator has an uninterrupted uh, power supply. That means it stays on for the two weeks. And you can keep it in the same sealed container in a shaded area without refrigeration just for 24 hours. But this one is about a few days old. It's in the fridge. So look at the pollens. The pollens are on the brush. So you can see the pollens. See the pollens? The pollens are on the brush. All right. So I will proceed to pollinate. All right. I got, I got my pollens now. Uh, so you can see. So that's the brush covered with pollens. So I will open the uh, uh, I'll open the flower now. I open the inner petals so that I can easily uh, pollinate the uh, the flower using my hand. So watch. So you can see the inner petal is totally closed, but I can still open it with my hand. So with one hand, there you go. You can see the stigma now. All right. So the inner petal is open. So what is in the center here, let me use this to touch it first. So I'm using the tip of the brush to touch the stigma. This is the stigma. This is the stigma. It's the female part uh, that receives pollens. And uh, I'm going to use my brush to rub it now. So if these petals are closed, the insect will not have uh, any means of entering to deposit pollens on the stigma. It shows uh, one of the main uh, advantages of uh, uh, ant pollination. So I'm going to go ahead and pollinate. So there you go. See? The brush is rubbing the pollens on the stigma. So without ant pollination, flowers like this will never be pollinated and you will not have fruits. So imagine your tree having about maybe 200 or 300 flowers during the flowering season and more than half of them or maybe most of them, the inner petals refuses to open or it just stays uh, closed. Then the only way you have plenty of fruit is hand pollination. So like I said, hand pollination ensures that the sarsop flower gets pollinated. It ensures that. So there you go. So we've done that. And aha, see, it's open now. So normally, this is how the flower opens. This is how the flower opens naturally. Because with this space now, beetles can go inside. But because, I mean, it's open now because, I mean, I forced it open with my hands. If not, uh, we will have lost this flower and we will not have any. The second advantage or the second benefit of... Uh, hand pollination of soft flowers is the fact that, you know, in, uh, sometimes you have flowers all bunched up. And from what I've seen, if you have this kind of flowers, more often than not, the natural pollinators will not pollinate all the flowers. As you can see here, this bunch has, I mean, how many pollinated flowers on this side? One, two, three, four. So these is about um, these are 10 already so these are 10 already out of a 10 uh, one has fully turned into a fruit that's the one that arrow is pointing to that and you have another two uh, this one here it's gradually becoming a fruit 
this one here is gradually becoming a fruit. This one here has turned into a fruit. Uh, on this bunch, we even have more than 10. I'm going to go to the other side. And I actually hand pollinated every single flower here. So, and guess what? They will all turn to a fruit, not at the same time, at different times. So this will allow us to have lots and lots of, uh, of fruits. Look at another bunch here. So I have lots of bunch of flowers here that are hand pollinated. So, and without hand pollination, you will not have as many uh, fruits or as many pollinated flowers as I have here. I have about a hundred pollinated flowers uh, on this tree at the moment. All right, so you can see this other bunch. Uh, this is the side of the same bunch that had 10 on that side. So it has an additional four. Uh, so a total of 15 pollinated flowers on one bunch, on one bunch. So this clearly a very, very good advantage of uh, hand uh, pollination, hand pollination of sarsophila. So it allows you to pollinate lots and lots of flowers. The third advantage of hand pollination of sarsop flowers is that with hand pollination of the flowers, you are sure to have fruits that are well shaped. I'm sure a whole lot of you must have seen uh, fruits that have a very horrible shape. Uh, they are not conical like this uh, fruit on my tree. The reason is, you know, for you to have uh, uh, a conical shaped or a normally shaped sarsop fruit, uh, the stigma must be covered entirely by pollens. So, in a whole lot of cases where you have insects uh, pollinating the flowers, the insects do not cover the surface area of the stigma with pollens. Uh, sometimes they cover uh, all the surface area of the stigma, but sometimes they only cover some parts of it. So, when you have parts of the stigma covered by pollen, you will not get well-shaped fruits. You won't get uh, fruits that are shaped like this. So with hand pollination, you can ensure, uh, as you can see on the screen, you can ensure that the entire surface of a stigma is uh, covered with pollen. So look at some of my fruits here. You can see the shape here. Look at that. It's a, it's a, it's a fine uh, conical shape. I mean, look at that. It's a fine conical shape. Look at that, it's a fine conical shape. All right, so this is a sarsop that's been pollinated by ants. I mean, look at the shape. You can see that the shape is not the normal shape. Uh, the ants probably deposited few pollens on just the uh, part of the stigma of a flower. And uh, you can see it does not have a conical shape and uh, it's going to be a very, very small uh, fruit. It's going to be a very, very small fruit. Uh, so this is an example of a pollination uh, by ants. Of course, sometimes our beetles are quite efficient because a whole lot of them can just go in there flapping their wings with pollens and make sure that the entire uh, surface area of the stigma is covered with pollens. So this is an example of a pollination by ants. And uh, you can see the fruits are small and they don't have the characteristic uh, conical shape of a sarsop fruit. So with hand pollination uh, of sarsop flowers, you get, uh, you get much larger fruits. As you can see on the screen, uh, that fruit there is, uh, I mean, it's a very, very large uh, fruit that I harvested in the last season. So this one here, I'm sure it's going to be as big as that one. The fourth benefit or fourth advantage of... Uh, pollinating uh, your sarsop flowers using your hand is that more often than not your sarsop tree will be infected with all kinds of pests and diseases and you will be forced to use a pesticide. A whole lot of these pesticides, you know, some of them, they kill the natural pollinators. Some, they keep the pollinators away. When this happens, you will have lots of flowers but there will be no fruit. Why? Because there will be no natural pollinators to pollinate these flowers because the pesticides has either killed them or gotten rid of them or the pesticide uh, is keeping them away. And pollination of a sarsop flower is the only mean by which you can, you know, pollinate uh, the flowers. So you can imagine, I mean, if there are no pollinators available, all the 15 flowers here that are already pollinated, I'm going to lose them, which means I'm losing 15 fruits. 
So clearly, you see that hand pollination, it's a very efficient and effective means of uh, pollinating sarsop flowers. So if you want to learn uh, hand pollination of sarsop flowers, I have a video which I've made very simple steps. So you can go watch that video and then uh, you have lots and lots of sarsop fruits and then you'll be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor.